Live at TFNN, the Power Trading Hour, with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another beautiful edition of the Power Trading Hour at your headquarters for technical trading and investing. It is TFNN.com. And uh, we've got a very interesting day coming on. And the uh, throws of options expiration were off three and a half points on the S&P cash. Fairly good for very disappointing earnings uh, this morning from both Goldman Sachs and uh, a couple of the financials. Uh, I think PNC Bank was okay. Uh, we got down to uh, 1840. Looks to me like everybody's trying to do all they can to hold this market up. And uh, the thought might be that they can get this thing uh, at least sideways into expiration tomorrow and going into a three-day weekend. I'm uh, willing uh, to uh, hang on to my positions and actually uh, really not stopping out of anything here uh, or even getting close. So I think I'll be okay till Tuesday. Uh, but uh, we'll get into it. And, of course, volume well, about 2.2 billion shares today. Uh, so we're going to be watching this close. But uh, uh, we're probably going to just looking at the uh, beginnings of earnings and what we have next week. I suspect we have less than 50% uh, of the companies make earnings uh, through this uh earnings cycle. Uh, they keep on moving up uh, earnings announcements uh, and then moving them down just before earnings, uh, trying to make it look like it. And of course, we can't even get the uh, companies to do that. And uh, uh, just a variety of companies just getting the absolute uh, uh, dog poop uh, blown out of them over the last few days. We're going to go through the one today that's Best Buy. But uh, very interesting to see a market that's supposed to be so robust, uh, getting the living uh, you-know-what cracked out of it, uh, except in uh, the indexes. Everybody else is just, uh, you know, every other company, every mall could close, but the indexes would be fine. Now, I, it's hard for me to believe. I just have a feeling that uh, we're getting a lot of hang time up here at the highs, and we'll talk about that in this show today also. In the 1991, the Persian Gulf War began at 7 p.m. Eastern Time as the U.S. transforms uh, Operation Desert Shield into Operation Desert Storm by launching its aerial bombardment of Baghdad and Kuwait. I will always remember where I was uh, when it started. I had just gotten back uh, from a long flight to deliver equipment uh, in Kuwait, uh, handed it to a bunch of guys in Humvees, and uh, they drove it. Uh, uh, well, I guess uh, I was actually on the border of uh, Kuwait, uh, handed it to a bunch of people from CNN, and uh, they were driving in. Uh, a company that I had needed to get something uh, uh, there uh, before all the uh, uh, firing started going off. And this is uh, about uh, three or four days uh, before the firing started. And uh, CNN called up and said, we need this, we need this, we need this, and it's got to be here then. And we said, well, there's only one way to get that, and that's walk it all the way through and actually buy all this equipment, a seat on an airplane. And they said, fine, and uh, we worked it out. And guess what? The only way to get, the, get it there was to uh, get on a... Uh, uh, a uh, a uh, supersonic plane. Uh, so I flew from Cincinnati to uh, LaGuardia. Was it LaGuardia or JFK? Can't even remember now. Uh, got on the uh, supersonic shuttle, uh, flew to France, got out there, uh, then to Saudi Arabia, uh, then in a Jeep. It was like kind of a trains, planes, and automobiles kind of thing all the way to the uh, border and then handed it to them, showed them how to work it real quickly and uh, said uh, goodbye and uh, flew back. Of course, they didn't put me on the shuttle on the way back, or I mean on the SST on the way back. Had to fly the eight and a half hours back. But uh, and then ended up spending uh, the night, I think, in New York City, catching the plane uh, the next morning back. But that night, I always remember. Uh, I think I just got in and was doing something. I forget. I was eating dinner. Came in, turned on the TV, and it just started. 
But uh, always, uh, it always will be one of those days, like the space shuttles and uh, other things that have happened in history. You always remember where you were when it happened. After the bell tonight, we've got Intel in the morning, GE, Morgan Stanley, SunTrust. Both Intel and GE are acting awful hinky. I'm not exactly sure which one of these is going to surprise. Uh, but uh, both of these acting uh, kind of like uh, something bad's going to happen. And uh, we'll talk about that maybe later in the show if I have time. But uh, I'm not exactly sure which one. Each Intel almost uh, looks uh, a little giddy out here, especially with the uh, pre-announcements to run some shorts out earlier in the week. Uh, always has my spidey sense going. Uh, of course, if you're talking about uh, whack-a-mole, uh, there was nothing like uh, the instability we're starting to see uh, in the Far East, the, the Australian dollar, uh, about uh, 7.30 last night, just absolutely got uh, uh, inviscerated uh, by uh, jobs numbers in Australia. Uh, and uh, I'm showing the chart in uh, Tiger TV and in the den. Uh, but uh, I continue to see a lot of uh, problems uh, and it looks like structural problems in the Far East. And if it's not uh, the LIBOR of China, the SHIBOR, uh, it is uh, Japan or some of these other countries that are just having these kind of uh, mini flash crashes and all kinds of uh, economic uh, data and actually in things like dollars and uh, uh, commodities and uh, just uh, it, it, normally this is not the kind of stuff that you see on a daily basis or the major reactions uh, in uh, especially the Australian dollar but uh, uh, we're starting to see a great deal of weakness over there uh, mostly in uh, commodities and commodities coming out of uh, Australia so uh, uh, just a very interesting. Maybe uh, Andy will tell us what's going on. I haven't heard the reason other than the jobs report, uh, but certainly looks like weak. And, of course, uh, if Australia is not shipping things, it means they're not shipping things to China. And uh, that is going to be very interesting. The National Association of Home Builders came out this morning. Uh, confidence fell one point uh, and was revised uh, in December. But uh, yeah, kind of seeing maybe a few chinks in the armor there, too. Uh, I think this is from yesterday. Best Buy. Uh, of course, uh, I spent a great deal of time uh, prior to Christmas and right after Christmas uh, looking at what people were interested in. And I've come to a fairly decent theory. Uh, that is that they were selling tablets. They were selling a few laptops. They were selling smartphones and a few high-end smartphones and uh, to some extent big screen TVs, although uh, I have a feeling a lot more people were doing what uh, Tom O'Brien did, which was look at them there and buy them on Amazon or go to Walmart where they were a ton cheaper. And uh, uh, But uh, to me, nothing else was coming off the shelves. When you looked everything around, uh, Xbox One did well, uh, and uh, just about nothing else really looked that good. So, eh, very interesting to see uh, the reaction here. Now, this was a stock that I wanted to short, BBY, uh, and could not get shares. And this is uh, probably the third one in three weeks that I wanted to share. Uh, short and could not get shares for. Um, and you would not think from the short interest on a lot of these stocks it would be a problem. These people are getting in massively short these stocks right before they're falling apart. So apparently there's a lot of uh, interest inside Wall Street for uh, getting short these stocks. And uh, a lot of people are probably knowing a lot of inside uh, skinny on it. I didn't think, I didn't know that uh, these things would be torn apart quite as bad as they were. I thought maybe this thing would gap down to 30, uh, which was going to be my play, that it got down to 25.78 this morning. Rather interesting, but just amazing volume. Uh, one of the problems with a lot of these companies are uh, they never should be in $44.66, uh, but we are seeing a market that is being incredibly good at running stocks that have uh, little or no uh, 
value, uh, fundamental value, uh, but running them good and uh, willing participants uh, in the financial press, really not asking uh, what is going on in these uh, companies. Um, and let's see what I want to do. Oh, I want to get back to that. Um, you know, quiet, you've got a few things. One, Amazon is quietly killing these companies. Uh, Amazon doesn't have to make money. Best Buy does. But there is the uh, big lie in distribution. Uh, and my guess is a great deal of this uh, was uh, stock uh, manipulators moving these up. We had a lot of people that wanted, uh, the original owner wanted to get out of Best Buy. We had a lot of people wanting to sell it. Uh, and uh, the people and the CEOs there are uh, more than willing to go along with the uh, belief that if we cut our margins to nothing, we'll be highly profitable. Well, today we know that isn't true. We knew that wasn't true in the fall, uh, but uh, everybody wanted to believe it, at least on Wall Street, so that you would buy the uh, stinky shares of Best Buy that was at 11 bucks uh, last year and probably was worth maybe 15 bucks. Uh, or 18 bucks at Christmas, even with a little bit of uh, their cost cutting. Certainly nowhere close to the $46. Uh, but markets are not always rational, and we have to look at them. The only downside I see now is that it's becoming increasingly hard uh, when uh, the stock manipulators are ready to get out of these stocks uh, to actually get any shares of these. Uh, I don't know when you would have had to pick these up. I suspect uh, five or seven days ago from talking to my broker uh, that I would have had to short Best Buy for today. And uh, I was thinking, well, maybe I'll just short it the night before or the day before. But uh, between this and Sears uh, and a lot of these other uh, stocks getting whacked, uh, if it is a fairly decent name, it is becoming incredibly hard uh, to short these stocks. Uh, BBB, why for a bounce? I don't think so. Um, I think we're going to get bounces in a few of these stocks that have blown up. But I, in fact, I'm thinking that we probably, you know, we're coming along a three-day weekend. Uh, SHLD, we'll see how this thing is done. Uh, but these retailers, uh, you know, maybe in some other stocks, uh, but these retailers, uh, J.C. JCPenney, uh, we'll get to them in a minute. But uh, these stocks that have just blown apart during earnings like Sears, this thing has done nothing but uh, once it came off uh, this last major high uh, where the, it was the third time it tested the 65, 70 area that started up uh, May 1st of 2012. Uh, another one with great with Sears. Uh, the story has always been horrible. Uh, it's just like uh, BlackBerry, another one of these stocks. But for whatever reason, uh, people have decided to buy in to the lie. And uh, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Uh, this is even a little different than the dot-com thing. Uh, that was just beanie babies. There was no earnings. There was nothing. Uh, everybody's uh, more than willing to buy the big lie in these, which I find uh, very interesting. Anyway, we're going to be back in just a minute. With over three decades of trading experience, Andy Hecht brings a tremendous amount of knowledge and expertise to each weekly issue of his newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report. The Technomental Commodity Report gives you Andy's unique technomental analysis of the commodities market, a combination of technicals and fundamental analysis which he has developed and perfected over his many years of trading. The Technomental Commodity Report is only $49 a month, and right now you can get a full month-long trial subscription while paying absolutely nothing. See for yourself the kind of weekly report Andy delivers to his subscribers every Thursday morning. You'll receive specific stock, ETF, and option trades based on Andy's analysis, so no futures account is required. For all the details and to start your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, Visit TFNN.com today. What the launch of Tiger TV? 
WTFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Dave, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And we're off four points on the S&P cash, uh, 2.3 billion shares, so kind of a quiet day. Uh, and it's going to all be about earnings uh, tonight after the bell on Intel and in the morning probably for GE. And then a huge uh, another couple of weeks of earnings when we come back. Of course, it is going to be a three-day weekend, uh, MLK Day on Monday. So we'll be out of here and having fun. I'll probably be at the dog park. Uh, with a vixen and Diablo, the trading puppies. Uh, They're not too happy today. Daddy didn't have enough time to take them out for a walk pre-show. And uh, they are showing their disgust by watching me here during the uh, show and uh, giving me the stink eye, as it was. So anyway, we're looking at uh, some other stocks today. But, uh, you know, when I look at these stocks, it certainly looks like uh, not a, most of them are starting to roll over. But, uh, you know, uh, I actually went and dug into Monday, called up FINRA, who is the uh, 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 body that handles collecting short interest. And the reason I called them is last week, uh, that we should have seen Friday night at 6 o'clock short interest numbers show up in these equities. And normally everybody puts them on there fairly quickly. I don't know if more people are just firing more people and uh, it just takes longer to get them up, but uh, didn't really find anybody that had them on their sites until Monday. 
uh, and uh, and Monday morning even then. So about noon or one, uh, called FINRA. Uh, I think I ended up talking to them on Tuesday and went through all the procedures on what those short interest numbers mean when they're filed. And uh, there's a whole date schedule that I'm going to probably put together in my a white paper I'm doing for our trading options, uh, trading equities through options. Uh, but uh, come to find out that you get basically two times a month you get short interest. And all those deals have to be uh, settled. And you can, a lot of times you're thinking, okay, this short interest is two weeks old. But because of the way everything falls, it can almost be uh, three weeks. It actually can be two weeks plus a couple of days, depending on which way options expire and uh, the weekends fall. And, you know, nor it can be 18 days. You can be a long time out on what those uh, short interest numbers are showing. And it looks to me like uh, they are more than willing to uh, start shorting uh, and making sure that they are shorting those markets uh, or the, a lot of these stocks uh, and making sure that the, the window on when reporting falls, falls like the day after. So um, they don't want a lot of people knowing that they're already hammering these stocks away. Super big funds, of course, will have to report it. Uh, if they've got interests over 5%. But uh, it looked to me like uh, there is a, a lot of collusion in the market to, to find some of these stocks and go heavily short and come back out uh, before the reporting dates. And um, a lot of times you're not seeing these hugely short uh, stocks going into uh, earnings, uh, but uh, just uh, the inability to actually get any shares to short of these companies is uh, rather mind-blowing. And, of course, it's mostly these larger companies where you can get uh, a substantial short position uh, in money, in true money terms, uh, but uh, not have to go to the 5% reporting uh, requirements and stay below it. So uh, uh, any of these companies like uh, Best Buy, uh, Sears Holdings, a lot of these things that have gapped down on heavy volume uh, have just not been shortable. And uh, I'll tell you the truth, it's kind of irking me out because uh, why I've had some good wins uh, over the last few weeks uh, shorting stocks. Uh, a lot more I think I should have been able to make money on. And uh, it looks like uh, I'm being kind of edged out by the big boys. Uh, I think that's going to be more problematic. But uh, uh, in talking to the FINRA folks, uh, we've had them on the show before. Uh, good enough a bunch of folks, but of course they are driven and, ri uh, and run uh, by their member uh, companies. So uh, Goldman Sachs and uh, Merrill uh, pay their salaries. Uh, the idea is that, of course, they're going to be self-policing uh, with this stuff. And uh, uh, one of the questions I asked was, you know, does anybody ever get fined uh, for actually not reporting short interest? And uh, that is another very interesting uh, thing because uh, the fines to me, although they wouldn't specifically say anything, fines to me don't look that big. I think if you knew what you were doing, you might just take the hit from FINRA for not reporting your short positions and uh, hopefully no one catches you. But uh, we'll see. But uh, they said that they find more than a few folks. Uh, but I'm wondering how good they are at catching them. We'll be back in a minute. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile. In the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach out levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we come back, I'm going to do a, a quick test out here. Of course, you can always give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, but uh, interestingly enough, I want to see uh, what uh, we're doing here. I want to do a live test, and then we're going to go on. Uh, but hopefully they'll bring the screen up in the engineering booth so I can actually see uh, what we have going on. Anybody home there? There we go. Okay. It looks awful good to me. So we're going to go back uh, to the rest of the stuff that we're doing here. Uh, and uh, what do we do? We were on the Australian dollar. We did the home builders. We did Best Buy. Uh, Europe numbers. Uh, not Jesse Livermore. I forgot to change this. Uh, oh, wanted to talk about gold, and then we're going to get in uh, to some more charts out here. Had some more questions about Confluence uh, for subscribers of Art of the Charts. Uh, we added additional uh, a, an additional report uh, yesterday about confluence levels, and uh, what I wanted to su say um, is uh, just uh, you know what we have in uh, store for us if uh, gold continues to go up. I suspect that we're going to start seeing gold pull back a little bit next week, uh, but uh, I don't have a high degree of confidence. I have. A medium degree of confidence in gold pulling back. Uh, it's uh, you know you're having a nice day out here up three bucks, uh, twelve forty one. Uh, but you know we're just forty dollars off uh, the lows or forty 
five bucks off the lows, not that much. Uh, and uh, it kind of be interesting. Anyway, I know a lot of people asking about miners out here, and I want to make sure that everybody knows where the first sign of a huge resistance will be uh, and why I'm making the call I am on gold, uh, which is that I'm willing to wait and sit on my hands. I think the big mo uh, move in gold is coming, and uh, these are some nice trades that we've had off the bottom. Uh, but uh, we're probably uh, looking at maybe a little bit more repair uh, from coming down from 1900 bucks in gold. Anyway, we've got a chart up here of the GDX. On the GDX, um, one of the interesting things is there's a very, very good confluence level between, uh, what, uh, $24.36 and uh, $24.48, about $0.12, cents, uh, over some fairly decent amount of trading time. Uh, back actually into August, uh, and you know, with the last high at 31.35. If you've read Tom O'Brien's book, uh, The Art of uh, Timing the Trade, uh, one of the f tools we have in our toolbox uh, is when two Fibonacci movements uh, uh, come together with harmony between the 618 and the uh, 382 of another, uh, you get a thing called confluence. And if it is narrow enough and if it's over enough time, uh, a pretty good indication of where you're going to see uh, strength and resistance in it. But uh, this I wanted to get a little bit more in that I didn't tackle yesterday was the energy down. And I'm showing uh, and pointing with my little pointer here. Uh, the uh, numbers in my power law vector indicator number, 18 on the first leg down from $31.35 to $22.88. And then, of course, you get your uh, ABC started here. And then the next leg is the $26.91 uh, high in uh, mid uh, late October uh, down to the absolute low we saw uh, in uh, late, yeah, early December, I guess about the 10th or the 12th, something like that. Uh, but what I wanted to show in that is that energy did not come off. Now, when we did get down to that low, the volume was much, much lighter, and everybody will agree on that, so you're going to get a bounce. The question is just how big a bounce you're going to get, and does it need to do more work? If the volume comes down to nothing and the energy really starts to pair out as you get to those lows, normally you can, have, you can go right back up into a V bottom. Now, if you're looking more at a U bottom, and again, I'm talking about uh, gold at uh, $1,240. Uh, if it goes to $1,200, uh, a pretty small percentage in real life. I know if you're playing futures, not a, a, a big deal, uh, but uh, it's not all that big. I wouldn't. It's not uncommon to see the st uh, stocks or even commodities bounce a few times. Uh, and basically get all the energy out, go sideways for a little while before they start making their next major run. And I, uh, I'm not short gold, and nor am I long. I think that there are better opportunities right in the moment. Uh, what I would like to see in gold is a move back down into this GDX, at least on the miners, into that $20 level, and I'd like to see all the energy really come out of it this time. I'd like to see a very small number in my power law vector indicator to tell me that all the energy from sellers is out. Uh, either way, either I'm right or wrong here. If I'm right, uh, then I get to buy it back at $20. If I'm wrong, we're probably going to see this GDX come up to about uh, $24.36. Uh, and my guess is you're going to see all the volume fall out of it right there. And uh, then you're going to get a pullback. And at that point, you're going to find out just where these things want to settle. But, uh, you know, not a bad trade. Uh, you probably had a better than 50% chance of getting uh, up to $24.36 and from uh, 20 bucks, Not a bad move. I mean, you're talking about, uh, what, uh, a nice 10% uh, move uh, in that uh, GDX. And uh, so not a bad trade. I'm not trying to tell everybody that they should never 
bought these things at the low. What I am saying, though, is that the, the real big move, the 50% move in this is if we can get it back down to $20 and uh, this thing starts its run and goes right back up to 3135 which is the start of just what I'm watching now. And, you know, could that take uh, six months or a year? It certainly could. My guess, though, is we're probably trapped in this lower trading range, somewhere around $24.36 uh, and $20.24 uh, until we see all the energy come back out of it. Now, maybe we start uh, another small ABC down or even a larger one, and all the energy comes out then, and maybe that would change my mind on this. But at the moment, I'm more than willing to wait on the sidelines till we see a little bit more. But uh, I think that if I am right, uh, we've got the first real move. We basically uh, are looking at uh, yesterday the um, the uh, 382 retracement uh, from this last big move down, uh, and uh, we're going to see what it does. Maybe it gets to 50%. Maybe it goes all the way to the 618. Uh, but if it does, uh, be very uh, sure that I think this is one of the most accurate uh, charts I've seen for predicting uh, where you're going to find support and resistance. And we'd have to have a huge move in gold probably to break uh, at least this GDX index up above that 24.36. And uh, we'll be back uh, with some other things before the end of the show. I uh, did want to get into uh, looking at some more uh, charts. BBBY, uh, BBY. I wanted to look at uh, Best Buy a little bit more today. Uh, to get a, maybe a better indication, especially, uh, come on, come on. I don't know why I've been having a few problems with my Internet. Uh, can I take a look at copper? Uh, actually, on this system, Andy, I do not have uh, uh, the actual futures, uh, but uh, we shall see. Hang on just a second. Uh, t -t 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 tiger clock, uh, uh, up and down, no, 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 or the trade H. Uh, okay, hang on just one second. I'm having some issues and I'm not exactly sure why. Here we go. We'll get back up. What I am pretty sure of is that uh, the companies uh, in copper, uh, have uh, rolled over fairly decently. Uh, when we look at uh, companies like FCX, I don't see, uh, let's go to a, a little shorter time frame, uh, I don't see that these things have not given exactly what we want. Uh, I think we're actually looking at FCX, a ABC down. And uh, that ABC down, let us go ahead and do that right now. Uh, let's go to expansions. And I think this is kind of a little ABC down at the moment. So there's our A, there's our B point, and figuring maybe today was our C point out here would mean that uh, FCX, a one to one uh, ABC, would take this thing to about $34. That is the last major uh, low at 33.81. Uh, so I think we have fairly decent agreement that. Uh, uh, that we are looking at a $34 level in FCX. Now, one of the reasons I believe it, we were talking about how energy comes in uh, to highs. And, uh, and if you look at my power law vector indicator number, when we go from the September 30th low to the October 30th high, uh, I had a 7.9 for my uh, power law vector indicator, showing that the, basically that's the kind of energy uh, that came in, almost an 8. Uh, for the last move, the December 3rd to the uh, January 2nd high, we had a 5.5. So this, if you want to look at these uh, numbers, think of them as uh, Richter numbers. You know, there's a huge difference between a 6 and an 8 on the Richter scale. Uh, this is very much like that. You want to see, you know, 2, 3, 4, uh, or maybe 20, 30, 40 percent 
difference in these numbers really get a good indication. Uh, but what we did have is the October 30th high at 19 million shares. You came into it with 9.7 million shares on January 2nd, and the thing instantly started to roll over, which I think confirms my thesis that the energy off that December 3rd low up to the high was way too light. And uh, when we look at the move today that is actually a 60% a retracement at the top uh, on a very light volume so far, uh, the bigger likelihood would be an ABC down uh, to that $34 level. And if you could get down there with a lighter volume, maybe 5 million shares someday at uh, 34 bucks on FCX, I would be looking at uh, uh, would be there. Uh, SCCO, so we'll take a quick look at that. Same kind of chart. Uh, this uh, looks, of course, a little bit better. You had just a little bit more energy up uh, off the lows. Uh, so let's take a look here. Uh, ta -ta -ta. And, you know, this thing's coming up, but it's uh, certainly light volume. Let me see here. Yeah, um, light volume today again. Uh, you're getting into the candle of the 3rd of January that had 2.2 million shares and you've got about 1.3, 1.4 million shares so far so you need a lot more volume to come back in. Uh, could you get back up over uh, 29, maybe 29 and a quarter in this thing? But I think that's probably where you're going to see this thing fail. Uh, you are looking at a 3.3 million share day high in SCCO on January 2nd and I tell you what, 1.3 million shares were into that candle now. Uh, if I was long, I would be selling SCCO right now. Uh, you know, uh, I, if, if that would be my theory too. Andy's talking in the den about the fundamentals for copper are pretty good. Um, you know, especially with Australia uh, getting hammered so bad, uh, all the job layoffs numbers uh, for one of the biggest exporters of commodities, especially industrial commodities going to China. I'm somewhat concerned that maybe we've seen the canary in the coal mine uh, in uh, the numbers uh, from Australia and their job numbers uh, overnight. And I think the proof of the pudding is in the huge move uh, that we saw in that uh, Australian dollar overnight. Uh, but uh, that's wor my working theory. I don't see anything uh, that I would be trading here. Uh, there's just not enough meat on the bone in any of these trades. Maybe there's more in copper, the metal itself, but uh, not real bullish here on any of these uh, industrial metals until uh, we see China's, uh, like I said earlier in the show, that just the whole issue with China uh, and the instability I see over there uh, makes me nervous. Anyway, I uh, wanted to look at some other uh, stocks of interest today. Uh, so give me just a second, and I will take a look at those. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Uh, see if we've got them out here. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. I have them. Yeah. Okay, LinkedIn, LNKD. And, uh, yeah, LinkedIn had a really good day today. And, uh, you know, uh, they are apparently doing very well in China. No one actually talking about China just a minute ago. Uh, they, are, of course, are professional networks. Uh, kind of very interesting, but uh, just a few words. Of course, uh, this was a highly shorted stock, got down to 198.60. And uh, you would think with a huge candle like this, uh, I would be looking for more like about 6 million shares today. Not getting quite that so far, but uh, we'll be back in a minute. Where we'll be racing through as many charts as we can before the end of the day. Profits and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, 
treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Join Andy Hecht as he teaches you how to make money in commodities. The Commodities Hour, next on TFNN. Anyway, as we come back, uh, we've got Andy Heck coming up just in a minute. I wanted to get through a couple of things uh, before the end of the show and then talk about one that has to do with uh, commodities. Um, watching New Skin out here, uh, this certainly smells like a fraud. Uh, I've stated on the show that I've stayed away from all these Chinese companies uh, because uh, the uh, ability... Uh, for fraud is uh, probably overwhelming for some of these companies. I think it is a new skin. We've got uh, statements out from, uh, uh, says that we uh, are doing our own province by province business review and will invite relevant uh, regulators to provide uh, guidance. 
Um, but a lot of these uh, semi-iffy companies uh, doing business in China, saying business is great. We've seen that with Yum. We've seen it with everybody else. They all go over there. They all say they're going to do land off of this business and uh, could be trouble. I was actually looking at New Skin uh, as a three-gap play, and I didn't get my third gap and why didn't uh, uh, why didn't like showing this? But this is a good example of a two gap play where this thing just failed. Uh, but uh, certainly, um, you had your first gap at uh, just around seventy bucks on uh, what the uh, what is that uh, June tenth of twenty thirteen. You had your second gap out here on uh, the twenty second of October, and both of these gaps probably ten twelve percent. Uh, this second, third gap was not big enough for me to pull the trigger on. I wanted one more gap that was probably in that 10, 12 percent range uh, to pull the trigger on this, and I did not get it. So uh, for the people that uh, email me today, uh, that's why I didn't pull it on a three gap play. That wasn't uh, big enough. Basically, you should see pretty much three consistent. Uh, sized gaps and to me this one was about half the size of the other two and uh, why I didn't pull the trigger there and why I was waiting for a gap hopefully one more up uh, around the hundred and fifty hundred sixty dollars level that I did not get uh, this is affecting uh, HLF another company that is of dubious origins uh, and uh, so we're seeing a little bit of pin action uh, in this thing down on strong volume today uh, did hit a uh, uh, high of 83.51. Uh, this is another company that's worth maybe 10, 15 bucks, maybe 20 bucks at the highs, depending on what you want. And uh, just another great engineered, uh, engineered short squeeze uh, of a company that's probably worth for, uh, far less. One day this is going to do a Best Buy or a new skin. The question is just when. Uh, they aren't that far apart uh, as far as a company. Uh, we do have Andy uh, Heck showing up, my stalker, uh, every Tuesdays and Thursdays. One of the articles I saw in the news today uh, was interesting, and that is uh, that uh, there's a lot of work going on to find out what is actually in your food by uh, figuring out cheap ways to uh, look for DNA markers. And the one uh, that I saw today was for chocolate. Apparently, uh, in cocoa, uh, crappy cocoa beans and expensive cocoa beans uh, are kind of intermixed a, a great deal. And uh, that is to get the higher price for a better tasting cocoa and uh, the very high end cocoa. Uh, but they finally came out with a fairly decent test. Uh, these folks doing these tests are going to uh, try to expand them to other food and food ingredients, including uh, non vegetable matter. And uh, we'll see what it does. But I didn't know that it was a huge problem with uh, saying my Kiko beans came from one place and I'm selling them like they came from another. But, uh, eh, handbags, chocolate, apparently it's all up for grabs. We'll be back tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time in studio. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.